Isn't this powerful, a powerful love that God has? No matter what kind of evil, blasphemous, mocking things people are doing to him, doing to his people, no matter how badly they are persecuting Jesus and persecuting his children, no matter what evil things they are doing to other people, murdering, abusing people, all these things, he still makes the sun to shine on them and the rain to come on them. Does that mean he approves of their actions? Absolutely not. But it means that he knows the root behind this. They do not know him. They do not know his love. They are being ruled by the prince of the air. They are being influenced by the devil. Just as Paul, who used to be Saul, was influenced by the devil and was murdering Christians. If you want to judge evil, that's about as evil as it gets. I don't think most people could predict what Jesus did, what Jesus was about to do, what he ended up doing for Saul. Because the love and mercy and grace of Jesus is hard to comprehend. We have the story of Saul tra uh, transforming into Paul. We know that now. But, like, imagine if you, like, put yourself back in time when Saul was Saul and not yet Paul. And just imagine the anger you'd feel towards him probably. Imagine just how much you'd want him to be punished and be put in jail for life or have the death penalty or something. I don't know. People have all sorts of thoughts. I mean, he was doing the most evil thing ever, killing Christians. So not just killing people, but killing the, the, the people that deserved it the least and literally trying to hinder the work of God. The, the, the greatest way to hinder the work of God is by killing vessels of God, right? So this is like as evil as it gets pretty much if we're to try to judge that, right? So you would probably be having all sorts of thoughts about Paul, right? You'd probably be speaking some sort of things publicly, and just feeling very angry at Saul and wanting justice and wanting punishment for him and wanting him to be stopped because he deserves it, right? Be real with yourself, right? You wouldn't, probably could not predict what Jesus was, was going to do. So Jesus ends up showing up on the road to Damascus, showing up. To, to appearing supernaturally, appearing to Saul, ends up blinding Saul, has this huge encounter to reveal, to wake him up, to reveal himself and wake him up. And he says simply, why are you persecuting me? If you were Jesus, do you think you'd say a lot of other things and take other actions than blinding him temporarily? Just blinded him temporarily, spoke that one sentence, and it wasn't even like, with hatred, malice, just a question to wake him up. And after that, Saul's eyes opened up to the truth that he was completely wrong and misguided and led by the devil, influenced by the devil 100%, and he was blinded spiritually, and his eyes opened up to the truth that Jesus is real. And, and Jesus loves him, and he, he received his, what led Paul, who was Saul, to repent was only the kindness of God. I do believe it would be a different story, a different end result, if Jesus didn't show up with kindness but wrath. But Jesus showed up with kindness and mercy because the moment that Saul's eyes opened up, he realized how wrong he was and how horrid, horrible he was, the things he did was. And what he deserved. But instead, Jesus didn't show hatred and punish him and, and condemn him. He just ended up leading him to go to one of his servants. And he opened up his eyes after not that long of a time. And then it was revealed that God wanted to use him as a vessel, as a servant, as an apostle. And then as time goes by, it turns out he's... Like the, 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 the highest general apostle. 
Acts 19.11 says that God did extraordinary miracles through him. He's the only one that has that uh, des description about the miracles that God used him in. The description of the anointing. Extraordinary. The mercy of God, people of God. The mercy of God. But the Bible says that it's the kindness of God that leads to repentance. And this is such a perfect example of like what that scripture really means. Paul repented and repented to the highest degree <laughs> where he surrendered everything and continued to surrender his whole life and endured persecution with joy. Gave his life literally for Jesus. That repentance only came from the kindness of God. The light appeared. The love was shown through the light. The kindness. Love equals kindness, gentleness, self-control, mercy, grace. That's the love of Jesus. To summarize it, that's what led him to Jesus. That's what led him to repent. If Jesus had appeared in a different way, this, he might have just continued to do what he was doing. There would be no transformation and the darkness wouldn't have been overcome. But when the light is truly the light, it leads to repentance and it overcomes the darkness. It stops that darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what we are called to. This, the moon doesn't reflect a different kind of light. The moon reflects exactly the same exact light from the sun. And there's many Christians that are, that are being Christians their own way, not the Christ-like way. And that's not going to be being the true light. It's being like a fake light, a tainted light. And sometimes that can cause more damage than good. How many people view Christians as judgmental when really, the, I mean, if every, if every or most believers we're truly shining their light. We're truly living Christ-like, loving people with the love of Christ. I'm telling you, the reputation would be the opposite. The reputation would be, wow, yeah, every Christian I met showed, showed me love like I never experienced. They showed me grace. They showed me mercy. I did something wrong to them. And they showed me grace and mercy. I was their enemy. They loved me. They actually said that they prayed for me and they blessed me. I couldn't control myself one time with rage. And they had this supernatural self-control and were peaceful towards me. I never experienced anything like that. It was wild. Usually people snap back at me when I do this and go eye for eye. They turn the other cheek. There's no judgment. You know, I don't believe what they believe. I'm not like them, but they don't judge me. They don't, like, puff themselves up and think they're so great and greater than me. No, they, they actually were like a servant to me. They served me. I mean, if every, if every or most believer was actually living this way, you, you can't hide the truth. It would be obvious. It would just be the testimony. Yeah, it's, it would be fact. I met this believer and they treated me this way. I met this believer, they treated me this way. Man, what superpowers we have if we would just flip the switch. <laughs> and all those things are attractive, right? Because we were created, we were all created to be in intimacy with Jesus. We were all created with a hole in our heart that only Jesus, Jesus can fill. Every single person, not just believers, every single person. So what happens is when we let Jesus be fully in us by being transformed into his image and doing what he calls us to do and have the fruits of the spirit and live by the spirit and really love with the love of Christ the way I was just describing, when we do that, what happens is people literally experience the love of Christ. They get a taste of heaven. That hole in their heart becomes, starts to become filled up a little bit. And guess what? They want more of that. So what happens? They want to come with you to church. <laughs> they want to hear more about what, why you're like this way. 
They want to know why they love spending time with you so much. What is it about you? <laughs> why are you like this? And they open up to then receive more love of Christ through you. More seeds planted, which leads to a harvest. Wow. What a powerful thing we can do on this earth if we just wake up and realize the power that we have. If we will just flip the switch and really be the light. I'm telling you, this world would look so different if every or most believer would live this way. And it's transforming. This is part of the end time revival. This true message of Christ, the new wine, would go forth. And people like you would receive it and would change, would change your ways, would start to love with the love of Christ like never before. That's where we're going. We're changing the world. We're flipping our switch on, and the darkness will fade. <laughs>